Guys, we're finally back to our alternate history, not alternate history, the Second Napoleonic War. And as we know, Napoleon came back and expanded through Europe, including into Germany, France, and the Ben Lux got Spain as an ally, a few allies. And now decides they want to try to get Sweden on their team to try and make a blockade. Which, and they want all nations to not let British goods in. So Sweden does decide to join this. Which eventually this will lead to, I think, the fourth coalition. I think we did three coalitions in the first video by the looks of it. That's a war of the fourth coalition. With Brennan seeing Sweden as being too close to Napoleon, they kind of asked for Norway's help, Finland's help, Sweden's help, and so on. With Russia getting involved, because Russia does Russia. And we get Italy involved, they get Czechia involved, they get Finland involved. Belarus doesn't get involved in this one, but Lithuania doesn't. So let's continue as this, as the F Romania gets involved, along with Hungary and Slovakia to try and liberate the land. Napoleon. Napoleon quickly and swiftly invades Italy. As their navy still hasn't become capable of taking on Britons. With Italy basically being taken out. Poland isn't contributing much at this point. And let's see how the allies down here went. Well, their invasions went well. As they've been wanting an invasion in this area. Let's see where the struggle for Napoleon is. Well, some of his allies. Like Ukraine. Which gets pushed back significantly. But as far as they possibly could be. Finland takes its invasion as it had war declared on by Sweden. And Sweden hasn't done much well. And at this point, I don't know what to do. With Napoleon sending forces up north to help them stabilize the fronts. Was Sweden embarrassed by this? I guess you could say. With Britain embarrassed too because they didn't get their goals done. With Napoleon's army marching into the Baltics. And as you can see, Ukraine starts an offensive into here. Along with the offensives already going on, Bulgaria takes Bucharest. The fall of Romania is starting at this point. With Budapest being captured and Hungary being and Romania swiftly defeated by Napoleon's army. Now starts operations in Norway where Napoleon helps Sweden establish a big chunk of Norway under its control. And yeah. Comes the end of the Fourth Coalition with a peace treaty. Let's see the peace treaty. But before the peace treaty... Russia is routed from Ukraine. I mean routed. And get this point. Do we even know who the world powers are? And so on. It's everybody being loyal to their anti-British ideas. Not really. We'll find out who was. By Napoleon. That British goods are still being traded with. With Poland. Despite a blockade, Poland has been secretly allowing British ships that were disguised as Polish ships. So Polish ships would leave, go to Britain, take goods, and come back. Napoleon saw that. They were trading with the British. Got a bit upset. 
a few other nations doing that, including Sweden technically kind of did that. But yeah. But it's Poland, like, one that causes this. With Poland being declared war on, Ukraine joins. So on, Britain joins. Norway doesn't join because they don't want to. Who else joins their sides? With Belarus joining Napoleon's side. And Russia joining Napoleon's side for the four, fifth coalition, which was which probably Poland, not a, and the Hungarian puppet kind of gets taken with them. Serbia doesn't know what to do with Ukraine making an advance into the southern Balkans. A successful one at that. But in the east, Napoleon's making successful advances against Poland. There's going to be a lot of coalitions, but like, that's probably going to be four or five parts. And will Napoleon end up in a bad spot at the end? Maybe, maybe not. With Belarus and Russia having fought on a different side in this coalition, that's just weird. Doesn't mean they'll become allies, or it's just Russia being Russia, like Russia was in the Nepal. With Poland meeting its demise, Hungarian puppet re says it's loyalty to Napoleon. Napoleon's okay with that. The Balkans kick Ukraine out of their territories, including Serbia and Bulgaria. Romania's reestablished. Ukraine says we're sorry, but nobody cares at this point, which is sad, poor old Ukraine. And this coalition being a successful Napoleon victory. Who knew Napoleon? And this, honestly, will they get into Africa? Probably. Look at Europe. It's Napoleon's playground. And let's see what Napoleon does. No alliance being signed between Russia and Napoleon because Russia doesn't trust them enough. Britain's still at war. Britain leaves the war at this point. This is the Arab coalition. It's time for the Arab coalition. Which is made by Turkey who declares war. Syria, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Israel. Why is Israel in the Arab? That doesn't make sense. Palestine. And so on. What is going on? I don't even know anymore, guys. That's so far what it looks like. That did have Syria. Syria did join it. So did Lebanon. Oddly, Israel joined it. Don't even know what's going on. But yeah. With Libya joining it. Stretching across with Jordan eventually joining it. And so on. It stretches around. But there's people against that. Including Iranian-backed militias and so on. But three nations band together on Napoleon's side that are in the Middle East. And one nation in particular helps the Middle East. Because they can. And the Sixth Coalition is against the Arab nations. But and many of the weaker nations, not, but Turkey seizing back its former territories. Let's see how Spain and France's expedition into Morocco goes. It goes really good. As they sneak down the coast, they climb mountains, then they make it into Algeria, this coast. The rest of Morocco surrenders. Algeria has a bit of trouble. Because Morocco didn't help them, even though they were on the same team. Iran starts a major offensive. Well, Syria, having been found out, was of their betrayal. It was a big deal. But with Israel doing what they wanted to do, and they leave the war. Along with many nations saying, why? It's not just this, but Syria switched sides. 
Iran is having major success. Napoleon makes an offensive here. Greece makes an expedition to Libya. Napoleon's taking all the population out of these countries. And then Algeria surrenders. They surrender after their coast is taken, basically. But Napoleon is finding out. But they know Egypt will be a bit different. With Turkey being... With Greece and Bulgaria and Serbia launching a major offensive against Turkey. It starts as a counter-offensive, which is whatever I think it is. But it turns out to be a major offensive. As it even takes Turkey's capital, Ankara. Turkey is forced to lay down arms at this point, with Yemen being overtaken by the Middle East. With a few nations in the Middle East after Libya and Iraq's capitulation leave the war. This includes Egypt. Basically, Israel leaves the war. Peace treaty is signed at this point, and looks good for Napoleon's team. Much is going on with this coalition over. But a war still has left to come. Ends up being the Swedish War of Expansion. With the Swalvbald Islands declaring independent as its independent nation from Norway at this point. And Sweden is in a bit of trouble. With Norway making a big offensive and Finland basically collapsing. Russia not allowing it to all fall to them. Joins the war on the red team, basically. And basically, Sweden takes all of Norway and all of Finland, but Russia gets a bit, and so on. Russia also goes ahead and annexes Belarus, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia, with the annexation of Mo Moldova being made by the Romanian puppet. So let's and that's all for today's video. Please like and subscribe and stay in tune for the next video, which might be a long time. It took a long time to go from the third coalition to the fourth coalition. I'd say almost a year. But yeah, that's all for today's video. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Wild Mapper out. Bye, guys.